Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Financial News. I'm Ron Jankowski with Pale Sites and Channel 4. My co-host, as usual, is Paul Munical from Ameriprise Financial. Today is August 29th, 2022, and Paul's going to give us an update as to the activity from last year, and I have this morning's news from Ameriprise, so Paul, take it away. Thanks, Ron. You know, today I'm going to talk about, despite the growing recession fears, we are seeing business leaders continuing to invest in their operations. Now, there's various surveys which have recently shown that business leaders are increasingly worried and even planning for a near-term U.S. economic recession. Now, thus far, however, they have not shown as much concern via their actions as they, ha as they have in their views. Recent employment reports continue to show strong, even surprisingly strong, net new hiring. And um, recent data from the Commerce Department report on new orders for durable goods showed business equipment orders remain solidly positive as well. As well as new orders for non-defense capital equipment, excluding aircraft, the commonly used proxy for business equipment orders grew 0.4% in the month of July. The results represented the 23rd month of expansion out of the last 27. Now, on a year-over-year -year basis, business equipment-related new orders were a solid 7.2% higher. That said, we believe the intermediate-term threat of what we believe could be a shallow economic downturn is real. However, tight labor markets, reshoring efforts, and recently passed government investment incentives could all help to support business investment demand over the intermediate term nonetheless. Uh, so we just got to continue to follow the data and, and see where we go from here, but uh, there's a lot yet to be unknown. Yes, there is. And uh, this morning, Ameriprise had uh, shared with us the U.S. stocks index futures are lower again this morning after markets fell sharply on Friday, as as we had been discussing. It was a pretty severe drop. Friday was a rough day for investors that are long equity markets. Uh, but it's one day, it's not the year. And markets in Asia closed lower across the board, while most European in in indices are weak in U.K., Markets closed for a bank holiday. Treasury yields are higher across the board as the two-year hits a 15-year high, 3.44%. I'm surprised. Though. Yeah, the yields are up, so lending rates should be increasing potentially with that as well. Bitcoin futures are down by about 4%, below $20,000 on the risk of sentiment. And while gold is off 0.7%, WTI crude... Unfortunately, is up 0.5 percent. It just will not drop. Uh, the year-to-date S&P 500 is a minus 14 percent. Dow Jones in minus 9 percent, and the Nasdaq for the year-to-date also is minus 22 percent. Those numbers are definitely worse than we reported last week, but yeah. given Friday's market activity, that's not unexpected. I'm hoping that Friday is a, a near kind of a, a reaction and overreacted uh, market. Yeah, the and fact that the overseas markets, as you reported, aren't doing well, right. we, that may follow through in our markets. Who knows? Well, I'm hoping there's a correction back up again. That'd be nice. Soon, yeah. soon. maybe today. Stay with us. Thank you, Paul, for the update. Uh, our show called Your Money will be next day with us. We'll be right back. And thank you for staying with us, our show called Your Money. Paul is going to be talking about high inflation here. Should you alter your portfolio accordingly, Paul? Take it away. Absolutely. It's a question I've gotten a lot this year with inflation increasing and how should you affect, adjust your portfolio. And let's just kind of go through the data and see where we stand. Okay. So, you know, for example, if you drive a car, chances are you're feeling that pain at the pump. 
caused by inflationary pressures and global supply chain disruptions. A lot of it from Russia's invasion on Ukraine um, that have caused the price of gasoline to surge in recent months. But the sticker shock goes beyond gas stations. Um, in 2021, the inflation rate, as measured by the Consumer Price Index, it rose by point. Or I'm sorry, it rose by 7.0%. That was the largest annual change in living cost since the early 1980s. Now, what does this mean for consumers? In basic terms, the cost of an average basket of goods rose 7% in just one year. And it remains to be seen how long it will take for inflation to cool down. Now, while much attention is paid to how this is impacting short-term purchases like food and clothing, it's also important to, to, to consider the toll it could take on your investments. Consider that over the 10-year period ending in 2020, the median annual inflation rate was 1.7%. Now, at that level, it would take more than 40 years for living costs to double. If, as was the case in 2021, the average inflation rate averaged 7% per year, the cost of living would double in just over 10 years. So if you're wondering if your portfolio was built to withstand these challenges, here is some inflation um, information Sorry, to help you decide. So investment considerations in inflationary times first. Remember that the change in the inflationary environment does not necessarily mean it's prudent to dramatically alter your investments. If your portfolio is appropriately balanced with your risk tolerance and time horizon in mind, fine tuning your investments may be a more appropriate strategy. If we look specifically at equities, um, otherwise known as stocks, they do play an important role in long-term portfolios. Compared to other asset classes, stocks may experience more volatility in the short term. However, they historically generate superior returns over the long term and should be positioned to do so in your portfolio, particularly if you have a long time horizon. Making regular investments in equities through retirement plan contributions can be an effective way to build your equity holdings in a volatile market environment. Systematic investing can enable you to buy more shares of an investment at a lower expense when markets are down and pay for fewer shares when prices are up. Now, fixed income investments as an alternative, looking at bonds and bond yields, they don't always keep pace with inflation, particularly when living costs as high as they are today. So if you're concerned about this, investing in Treasury Inflation Protected Securities, TIPS, is an option to consider. These are marketable securities that pay a set rate of interest, but the underlying value of the bond um, is adjusted based on the inflation rate. Also worth considering is a fixed income investment tied to inflation <coughs> are I-bonds, and that's a form of U.S. savings bonds. Um, you can talk to your advisor about this, but you can usually invest up to $10,000 per year in these bonds. The interest rate paid is adjusted every six months based on the inflation rate. In early 2022, this year, I-bond yields were pretty attractive towards investors, so please take a look at them. Um, however, these bonds are not completely liquid so your money needs to be committed usually for at least a year with full liquidity reached in five years you know lastly some other investment options to consider there are other investments that offer diversification potential in a high inflationary period <clears throat> this includes real estate which may see rising values as higher income streams that often um, tend to reflect changes in the cost of living Real estate investment trusts are marketable securities that offer ready access to the real estate market. So 
discuss potentially real estate investment trusts with your advisor before investing. You can also discuss precious metals such as gold. It can play a role or a hedge against inflation. However, gold is a highly volatile asset class and shouldn't represent more than a small percentage of your portfolio if appropriate. You know, any good time is a good time to plan, but now it can be beneficial to sit down with your financial advisor um, to discuss more carefully um, how to um, look at your portfolio and overall financial plan and see if you are situated properly for today's economy. Your advisor can help you um, um, assess how to manage your current expenses more efficiently while still keeping your most important savings goals on track. And as always, if you're working with a financial advisor at home, that's great. However, if you're looking for a second opinion or someone to begin working with, feel free to give me a call. You can call me directly at 708-226-3412. Thank you, Paul. Uh, it was a good topic to cover. And for Paul Municle with the Mirror Price Financial, myself, Ron Jankowski with Channel 4 and Palisades, we wish you good investment day.